Hello and welcome to the Kennel Connection webinar on setting up the QuickBooks Direct Link module in the Kennel Connection program. My name is Scott. I'll be your presenter for this webinar. I can be reached at the training department of Blue Crystal Software at either my email, scott at bluecrystalsoftware.com, or you can reach me at 888-486-4343, extension 307. Today we'll be going through the basic setup for getting the QuickBooks Direct Link module uh, active on your program. Once the module is installed in Kennel Connection, you'll want to make sure that your QuickBooks program and your Kennel Connection program have their databases on the same computer to ensure connectivity between the two. Then it's just a matter of connecting your database link from Kennel Connection to QuickBooks and connecting your accounts in QuickBooks to Kennel Connection. We're going to start by doing that by going to the File tab and going to the Business Info section. There we'll find the QuickBooks, uh, QuickBooks, <laughs> excuse me, the QuickBooks Direct Link tab. I'm going to click that. And this is where we're going to set up our database link to QuickBooks and our account links to the accounts in QuickBooks. First, you need to direct the path to the QuickBooks database. You can confirm this path by going into your QuickBooks program, selecting File, and going to Open Previous Company. The last uh, two or three companies you've opened in QuickBooks should show their paths here for the database. Simply find the one that reflects the database for your company that you want Kennel Connection to, quick to connect to. Jot down the path here, in this case for Hot Diggity Dog. And then we're going to go back to Kennel Connection. And then you click the Browse button here next to the path window and navigating through your folders, find the database and attach it to it. In this case, I have the company file under the default Intuit folder that QuickBooks recommends uh, as the default for saving it in. While you can save your QuickBooks database in a different folder that you've created on your uh, system, we do recommend using the default Intuit path. Uh, sometimes, depending on the system and on the version of QuickBooks, using an alternate path than the default Intuit path can cause some connectivity issues. So sometimes it's just easier in the long run to go ahead and put it in the default and connect it from there. Once you have your path in a QuickBooks database connected, we want to make sure that Kennel Connection has the proper authority in QuickBooks. So for that, we're going to go to Edit and Preferences. And we want to choose Integrated Applications. Under the Company Preferences tab, we want to make sure that Kennel Connection is listed here. Then we're going to click Properties after selecting Kennel Connection. And we're going to make sure that Kennel Connection has allow this application to read and modify this company file and allow this application to log in automatically selected. This will ensure that Kennel Connection can access the QuickBooks database whenever it needs to. Then we want to ensure that there are some basic account files in QuickBooks that Kennel Connection will need to link to in order to transfer information properly. To confirm this, we're going to go to our chart of accounts. And I'm going to highlight the accounts that if you do not currently have in your QuickBooks program, you will need to add to ensure that information transfers properly. First, you need to make sure that you have an accounts receivable account and that it is in accounts receivable type. Next, you want to make sure you have a cost of goods sold and that that is a cost of goods type. Then we want to make sure we have an inventory asset account and that's going to be an income account. Then you want to make sure that you have a KC taxes account, which is going to be an other current liability. And this is for taxes to transfer from Kennel Connection to QuickBooks. 
QuickBooks calculates taxes differently than Kennel Connection does. So in order for the taxes to be uh, recorded properly in QuickBooks, they have to be transferred separately in their own account file, in this case, the KC taxes and other current liability. As a default, we recommend having an other income account and having that, and that's an income type. And that's mainly for uh, a setting in the system for default income that we'll go over shortly. As long as you have those basic accounts in QuickBooks, the setup between QuickBooks and Kennel Connection should be uh, fairly straightforward. Once those have been checked, we go back to the Kennel Connection program. And you'll find that we have uh, below these options here, which I'll go over shortly, we have our links to income accounts. First, we have our display income account uh, for default income. You want to click each one of these. And when you click them, a window is going to appear showing all accounts in QuickBooks that Kennel Connection will allow you to attach to for this category. So in this case, we have additional discount classes, etc. For default income account, I'm going to choose other income. For accounts receivable, again, you'll click the window, choose the accounts receivable account. KC taxes one and two, you'll want to select your KC taxes account for each one. And then for non-taxable code, you want to make sure that's selected as non. Now, as I mentioned, the other income I have here for default income account. The default income account is an account that takes all income data that's not specifically linked to another account in the inventory section. If I close the business information section for a second and open up our inventory section, you'll notice that every inventory item at the bottom right hand corner has the option to select a specific QBDL income account. So for example, if I want my daycare and I select the daycare inventory item and then click the browse button next to the QBDL income account window, that's going to show me all income accounts available to attach items to. So if I've created a daycare income account in QuickBooks, I can select it here in the inventory section. Now any income on an invoice attached to the daycare inventory item is going to transfer over to that specific income account in QuickBooks. You do not have to attach every inventory item to an account. It's optional if you want to uh, manage your incomes through separate accounts in the system. The reason we have the default income account is so that if you set some of these inventory items to specific accounts or decide not to set any of them, any inventory item with a blank QBDL income account is going to go to the default income account. So the default income account is a catch-all for any inventory items that have not had a specific income account selected for them. Now we have other options here in the QuickBooks Direct Link tab. At the bottom, we have customer transfer order, which you can choose last name, first name, or first name, last name. Then we have the option to display warnings on error report for name changes. We have the option to update inventory quantity on hand, if you're keeping track of your uh, inventory quantities in QuickBooks as well. And we have the option to disable QuickBooks Direct Link. What this does is uh, there are two ways to run the QuickBooks Direct Link module. You can have it run automatically, or you can have it run manually. When it runs automatically, every time you create an invoice, uh, when you create a uh, receipt, anything, any kind of record is created in Quick Kennel Connection that transfers to QuickBooks, that is automatically transferred over to QuickBooks. If you disable the QuickBooks Direct Link, that stops the automatic transfer and allows you to sync manually. I highly recommend uh, disabling the QuickBooks Direct Link especially if this is your first time using QuickBooks Direct Link module. Uh, and there's a couple of reasons for this. Uh, one is if you're constantly transferring data from Kennel Connection to QuickBooks, uh, especially if you have a high volume facility, if you have a lot of uh, 
different computers on a network running simultaneously creating these records, this can cause a slowdown of the system as you have a constant stream of data being passed over to the QuickBooks database. So uh, you may experience slowness if having it set to automatic. You may want to choose to set it to manual because of that. Also, the way QuickBooks directly works is that once an item is created in QuickBooks uh, from the transfer, so uh, it is not transferred again. And there are no modifications created after they have been created. So for example, if we create an invoice in Kennel Connection, and then once we create that invoice, it's automatically transferred to QuickBooks, that invoice has now been locked in Kennel Connection, it will not be transferred again. If you go back and make a modification to that invoice, uh, now since it's already been transferred, Intuit will not allow us to make any modifications in QuickBooks. So that record that has been transferred, you now have to make the same modification in QuickBooks to the invoice that you did in Kennel Connection. If you're transferring your records automatically, once an item is, once an invoice receipt is created, if any changes are made, you're going to have to do double entry in QuickBooks. If you're doing the manual sync at the end of every business day or every other business day, depending on how often you need the data in your QuickBooks program, uh, then you have that time frame to make any changes to invoice or receipt before having to worry about manually creating the same changes in QuickBooks. So disabling the QuickBooks direct link and doing it manually as opposed to automatically can save you time and double entry and uh, re uh, reduces the need to have to worry about items being transferred before they're modified. Finally, when you run a manual sync, you will receive an error list. Uh, this will tell you what items have not transferred from QuickBooks, uh, from Kennel Connection to QuickBooks, and will give you instructions on how to fix the records in the system so that they will transfer. If you have Disable QuickBooks Direct Link selected, you're going to run a manual sync by going to the Utilities tab at the top and selecting QuickBooks Direct Sync. This is going to open up our QuickBooks Direct Sync window. As a default, all items are checked. You can uncheck these if you're not keeping track of vendors or if you're not transferring uh, any new inventory items you want to speed up your sync. The, in, uh, the start date and end date will always default to the uh, date you last synced and the current date. So in this case, the last time I did a manual sync was 6-18-2013, and the current day, of course, is January 24th. You can modify these dates when they come up. This is just the default, so if you're just normally syncing from day to day or, or week to week or what have you, uh, these will automatically pop up so you don't have to remember the last time you synced. Don't worry about uh, overlapping sync dates. If you decide to backdate to get new items, once again, once an item is transferred from QuickBooks, uh, from Kennel Connection to QuickBooks, it will not sync again. Once you're in the QuickBooks Direct Sync screen, all you have to do is set, choose your dates. I'm going to go back and just choose... Uh, A short date range from when I last synced and click OK to sync. The sync time the sync time can be anywhere from a few minutes to 20 minutes or half an hour depending on the volume. If you're syncing months at a time it could take upwards to half an hour for all the information to sync especially if you're high volume. We recommend not syncing more than a month at a time if you're able to sync a week at a time. Uh, depending on your volume. If it's, a slow, if it's a low volume, if you're a small company, you can get away with syncing a month. The thing we do recommend is making sure that when you do sync, uh, that you remain at the computer while it's syncing. And don't walk away from it if it's a long sync. So if there's any connectivity issues with the sync, you are aware of it, so you'll know if uh, the data was not synced properly. As you can see on your screen, I received an error report. It's listing all the items that did not transfer over, as well as the reason they did not transfer over. Uh, the error report is generated by Intuit. If you uh, have any questions regarding these errors, you can contact us. You'll notice there's an email button here. If you click the email button, this error report will email directly to us, and we can help you with any of these errors that you don't fully understand. Uh, and this is one of the main reasons I recommend using the manual sync, so you can get this error list, fix the items that did not sync over to allow them to sync properly. When you first run your uh, manual sync, uh, when you first get your, everything set up and you sync your first uh, batch, 
uh, the first you're going to receive a lot of errors. This is because there's going to be some tweaking between the programs to make sure that the information is accurate on both ends. Majority of your syncing issues are going to occur because there's a discrepancy between data in Kennel Connection and in QuickBooks. I'm going to give you one example right now that uh, usually occurs, or it's a more common error that comes up. Also keep in mind when you run your first sync and you get an error report, do not panic if your error report has 500, 600 items in it, especially if you're a larger facility and you're syncing a lot of items over. The majority of those errors might be related to one minor change in the programs to allow those items to sync. Uh, a perfect example is if we go to File, Setup, and the List section, and go to Payment Methods. Here we have the payment method Amex, which is default with the Kennel Connection program. Depending upon your QuickBooks and what information you've entered into it, your payment types may differ. So, for example, as I said, we have Amex here in Kennel Connection. If we go to QuickBooks and go to our payment method list there, you might have Amex listed as American Express. Therefore, when you sync your database from Kennel Connection to QuickBooks, any receipt you have that has the payment type as Amex is going to be rejected because QuickBooks doesn't recognize the Amex payment type. It sees it as American Express. Now you'll notice in my QuickBooks here, I've added Amex as a payment type. So now any receipts that are marked as Amex will transfer over. So you'll want to keep an eye out for any payment types you might have in Kettle Connection that QuickBooks does not have. Uh, once again, here's another example. Sometimes MasterCard, you may have a space in the middle or you may not have a space in the middle, depending on uh, when it was entered where. My recommendation is when you find these types of errors where uh, there's a listing error in QuickBooks, do not delete or modify the item in QuickBooks, just add the new type in QuickBooks so it matches kennel connection. So in this case, I've added an additional payment type of American Express with the name Amex, so those receipts will sync over. This is just one example of uh, some of the tweaking you'll have to do when you first start the QuickBooks Direct Link module to make sure that everything syncs over properly. Once your sync uh, is set up and you're syncing items over, uh, depending on the QuickBooks program you have uh, and how it's set up, you should be able to access all your invoices and receipts through items like the accounts receivable section. I bring that up. Here's all of our invoices and receipts. Uh, please keep in mind that we don't, uh, while we do support the QuickBooks Direct Link module, obviously we, we uh, op offer this module in order to get your data over to QuickBooks. Uh, we do not offer support for QuickBooks itself. So if you, if you have any questions regarding how items are being tracked in QuickBooks, uh, or how to run reports in QuickBooks, that kind of thing, we do recommend contacting Intuit or checking out their training off, uh, options. Uh, what we can really assist with is anything regarding the sync itself as far as the error report of what comes up. Uh, if you're having any issues with connectivity with the database between Kennel Connection and QuickBooks, uh, the error list, which we will assist with uh, based on our experience with past errors. Uh, but any uh, issues with items once they've transferred over to QuickBooks is really going to be a QuickBooks, uh, an Intuit question. And that's basically it for the setup. It's very straightforward. Uh, once you have your account set up and your database is connected and you've chosen whether or not to run automatically or manual, uh, it, it's really just a matter of transferring of the data. Uh, once again, if you're running automatically, you're not going to receive an error report telling you the items have not transferred over. You can run a manual sync from the utility section while you're set to automatic uh, and choose a date range. If, so if you want to go back and try to grab items to find out if anything has not transferred over. Once again, I just personally recommend using the manual sync uh, as a regular occurrence. But after you get your accounts linked and the database set up, it's just going to be a matter of syncing the information properly, making sure there's, uh, the customers are the same in each one, that your records are the same, and everything should transfer over fine. Uh, if you ever experience issues where the QuickBooks sync does not work, the, th the, one, the three things I recommend doing is one, making sure your database path is accurate. 
Two, going back and relinking the accounts. If you get an error that says an account has not been recognized or does not exist in QuickBooks, it's possible that accounts were modified or changed or moved in QuickBooks or something occurred between the two databases where the connections have been misaligned. Uh, it, so if you're having an issue where nothing seems to be syncing over or certain accounts are not being recognized, just go through the motions and reattach everything. Uh, make sure that your database is attached properly by clicking the Browse button, finding it, and connecting it again. And click on each of your income account types and reselect the account to make sure that it is properly linked.